What were the Titans, Batgirl, Nightwing, and Batwoman doing during the holidays? Hmm? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I'm reading dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel sex and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. It's that time of year again in which everyone celebrates their own respective holiday. Well, we're gonna go ahead and tell you what the superheroes are doing during that period, because they all came out with a whole bunch of superhero-related holiday books, and my team needs to go ahead and get a break during the holidays. So because of that, we're gonna take a bunch of these little holiday stories and combine them into one to bring you a video telling you your favorite superheroes. Today we have Titans, What a Year for a New Year, Batgirl and Nightwing, I Don't Wanna Be Late, and Batwoman, Light in the Dark. Let's begin with the Titans. Roy Harper managed to avoid any mask-related work on Christmas. <laughs> but New Year's Eve? That's a different story. Donna tells everyone that Grayson's hunch was right. This whole rampage was to steal some Star Labs devices. Grayson tells everyone not to worry. As fast as they are, these two will never... Subtle. Grayson looks up to see Ding Dong Daddy and Honey Bun racing by. Just as they leave, though, Grayson fires a hook into the car, telling everyone to gather on him. He's about to tail them, literally. As Daddy rips through the streets, Roy moves into position. Once ready, Roy calls out that he's got a clear shot of Honey's robot wires underneath the skin suit. So get ready to hit Daddy. As Roy fires, the arrow breaks, and Honey Bun tells him, You really think some cheap shot will work twice? My man had me armored up and supercharged. Daddy rides down the building that he was on towards Roy, causing him to jump out of the way, and he shouts, Consider yourselves lucky no one paid us to off you tonight! And he drives by. The rest of the Titans gather, with the exception of Wally. And Roy says, There's no way that we'll be able to shut these two down before midnight now. And Lilith asks if this is why he brought them here, so that he can kiss some party girls. She just happened to pass some on her way over. Grayson then adds, he's sorry if he wanted to play tourist, but Roy stops them telling him no, but it's great to know that you think so highly of my intentions. You want to know the real reason that I brought you all together here on New Year's Eve? Well, even though I don't like talking about my addiction, in recovery, I felt how powerful and positive it would be to mark a new beginning, like starting a new chapter. That's why I've always liked New Year's Eve. It gives me time to reflect on what's important, break the bad, focus on the good. I just wanted to celebrate a fresh start with everyone. But Lilith then apologizes that she pushed any buttons, but Grayson says, that's it. We don't have to catch them. We just have to push their buttons. A little while later, Lilith catches up to Daddy and Honey and tells them, why are you leaving so early? How about we settle this over a race? If they win, the Titans won't come after them. That is, if he's not too scared. Daddy spins around and heads back, and Roy tells Grayson, breaking into a car is not what he meant by fresh starts. He's trying to put this life behind him. Grayson tells him not to worry. If he wrecks it, he'll have Batman buy the owner a new car. So Roy pulls up next to Daddy, and Honey calls out that this will be a straight race. If they win, then they're cut loose. Lilith then does the countdown, and as she shouts go, the two cars speed down the street. Daddy pulls far ahead of Roy, and just before the finish line, Donna and Garth jump in Daddy's way. The two grab the car and toss it aside. Honey flies out of the car as Daddy and it go crashing into the waters below. But just as Donna and Garth enjoy this sight, Honey pulls out a gun, and a second later is shot by an arrow and electrocuted. Roy tells her that she may have armored up, but she is still made out of metal, and it still conducts electricity. A little while later, Grayson tells Roy that he's sorry that he didn't get to see the ball drop with him, but Roy tells him it's fine. The new year wasn't the important part. It's the resolution on marking a new chapter together. Donna then gives Roy a kiss on the cheek, and Lilith says that he got that midnight kiss after all. Roy then says, normally, it's done on the lips, and Garth tries kissing him, asking, like this? Everyone begins to laugh, and Grayson remembers that he's going to be late. Next up, we have Batgirl and Nightwing. With things wrapping up with Daddy and Honey, Grayson tells everyone that since they're done, he has a thing that he's late for. And Roy says that he's pretty sure Batgirl wouldn't like to be referred to as a thing. Elsewhere, Barbara finishes wrapping up her run with her villains, telling them that she kind of already had New Year's plans, as much as she would love to spend time with them. As she swings away, she thinks that if she still hurries, she can make it to the bridge before the sunrise. And then, a car crashes. Barbara quickly swings down to help the civilian, and then rushes over to the bridge. As both Grayson and Barbara climb the same bridge, they tell themselves that they really hope the other isn't getting tired of waiting. Then as they both hop up, they both apologize for being late, and then they realize they're both late. Grayson then says, how about they just stand here and watch what's left of the fireworks? And as they sit, Barbara tells him that that would be perfect. Our last story of today is Batwoman. During the holidays, Kate Kane and her father would always come to this diner and eat cherry pie, as he would tell her the story of Hanukkah. No real reason as to why, but one year it stuck they did it ever since. Even though he's gone, Kate still comes by to grab a slice of pie during the holidays. However, before she can leave, a man tells Kate 
that he seems to have come to the right place. He needs her help, Batwoman. Kate tells him that she's sorry, but he's got the wrong gal. And he tells her again that he needs her help. His time is running out. She then tells him, mind reader or not, he's got the wrong, and then stops and sees men walking into the diner. The man says time's up, and it tells Zenit that tributary says hello. The lights then all go out. Kate runs outside asking where did they go, and then she sees the men taking hostages before escaping, and then fires a shot. As Kate lays on the ground, she thinks, the nerve of that guy to shoot her. All she wanted was some pie. Once she gets up, she notices everyone in the city unable to use their electronics, and then realizes an EMP went off. She runs over to a payphone to call her old friend Kit, but as she can already tell, she's assuming since Kate is calling from a payphone, something's going on. Kate says that all she wanted to do was go eat pie and miss her dad in peace, but never mind that. Can she use her hacker magic to find out who blew up that EMP? Kit tells her that she's trying, but her backup generators are powering her private network and it's going really slow. Stupid spinny wheel of death. Kate then says all this has to do with some weird dude, and he said tell Zenith that Tributary said hello. What the hell is that even supposed to mean? Kit stops and says, actually, I'm Zenith. The message was for me. My online name is Zenith, and his is Tributary. He's my friend. Hours ago, Tributary posted a manifesto online naming Timon Industries, his former employer, as a shell company. Tributary found out that Timon Industries was really an arms dealer supplying weapons to anti-US foreign factions, and he blew the whistle. And now they're gonna kill him. Kate suits up and rushes over to Time and Industries and fashionably crashes in. She begins destroying the computers and then the man who shot her from before appears and fires again. Through the radio, Kit continues to explain how Time and Industries was trying to destroy their existence. And Kate punches the shooter telling him that he owes her 295 and fond family memories. As Kate continues to fight with the thugs, Tributary starts to set off the self-destruct program and decides that they all need to get out of there. After kicking the last two men, she tells them, happy holidays, jerks. And she swings out of the building with Tributary. And he tells her, thank you, I owe you. And Kate tells him, how about some pie? Later at the diner, Kate asks Kit if she really had a menorah lying around. And she tells her, okay, maybe I bought it on the way over here. Tributary then hands Kate a flash drive, stating that this is all the info that he has on time and he trusts that she can get it to the right people. Tributary then explains that actually, he was the one who set up the EMP. It would be the only way to get into the facility. And a few moments later, the lights all come back on, and Kit shouts, it's a Hanukkah miracle! And Tributary then asks, so what happens in this tradition of yours? Kate tells her that her dad would now tell the story of the Maccabees, badly pitching it like a movie. Kit and Tributary sit silent for a moment, and Kit asks, so are you going to tell us the story or not? Cut to 2,000 years ago. And that concludes these three holiday stories. Now, I hope you guys really did enjoy them. And if you did and you like your comic books being read dramatically back to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. It actually means a lot to us. Also, if you want to chat with me more, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Storian. And I'll see you guys next time right here.